Real Comics Podcast coming back at you here. This right here is our discussion. We're tying this in with, I think, Black Adam. Is that right, Mark Radlich? Is that what's going on? Yes, Jesse Starcher of the Source Material Podcast. Oh, we God. are tying this. Got we that are, one right. You told me to, you told me to be serious. Um, <laughs> we are tying this in with the major feature-length motion picture starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Black Adam, which debuts this Friday, as a matter of fact. Do you remember when we did Salvation Run? Yes. Do you remember when you told me about Ollie's and Ruin My Life? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when you used to get me to go around Ollie's and fondle junk? That's good. That's good for your soul. Yes. We would wander around the Ollie's together, holding each other's hands, fondling, fondling all the junk around us. That's what we and you did. <laughs> and, and they asked us never to come back. <laughs> get the fuck out was the safe word. Um, anyway, <clears throat> at the Ollie's here in the uh, central Florida, Tampa Bay area, uh, I found Salvation Run. Like, oh, this whole idea of, like, villains trapped on, like, another planet. I thought this was cool. We we did, and we did a source material on it, if you'll re- remember, just to do it. Like, it, I, I didn't know what the connections to it were. It was a limited series. It was about villains trapped on a planet trying to get off the planet. I'm like, this looks cool. Let's talk about it. If you'll recall, the whole introduction to that comic was a series of events, like, like Wonder Woman killing Max Lord, something else happened. And then they kept saying, and Black Adam's Rampage. Right. Over over Earth. And then you would see in the panel <clears throat> when they would ever they were reference Black Adam's Rampage seen in the pages of World War Three by Keith Champagne. Oh, the champagne, Jesse. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, the champagne. The that champagne. not that champagne. <laughs> and I was like, even before the Black Adam movie was um, announced or shot or anything, I think even before it was even pre-production, like it had been in talked about uh when the first Shazam movie went into production yeah, but like the rock the rock's been lobbying to be yeah black adam for a while right i wanted to do world war three when it was referenced in salvation run it just happened to be that there was a black adam movie coming out I'm like that's perfect we'll do world war three then that's how it all coalesced and came together gotcha gotcha uh, yeah and now I didn't know what we were getting. I knew that war, World War Three was a thing. I did mm-hmm. not know that it tied in with 52 mm-hmm. until I started it. And one thing our listeners should understand is that, the, and I'll, I'll probably mention this in the synopsis maybe, but this takes place in the very like final couple weeks of 52. So this they keep referencing week 50, and that is what's happening. This larger crossover, or should you say, larger event that's going on this part that we're about to get into in world war three which i thought was going to be laser focused on black adam which this is kind of like a side story i was gonna say it felt like martian manhunter's book not black adams right right 100 percent. so yeah i didn't know what we were getting i know i i think i've got a few of these issues i may have actually bought this uh this four issue series just because it was in a pack at the local comic shop but i've never read it i bought the trade for this podcast. All right, all right. So we're going to get into this thing. Let me let me go ahead and I'll run down the creative team here. Uh, written by Keith Champagne, John Ostrander. Artists are Pat Olaf, Drew Garachi, Andy Smith, Ray Snyder, Tom Derenick, Norm Rapman, Jack Jadson, and Rodney Ramos. And I, I don't know if that's just including, if that's everybody that contributed to the book. That's what's li- listed on the wiki here. Now, this was published April of 2007. And like I said, 52 went from May to May. So this fits right in there uh, with what's going on. This is something that DC was like, oh, we've got this event going on. How about we write, have something else, you know, another couple titles that kind of fit into it. I'm sure like a good bit of the DC titles were uh, experiencing some type of effect from 52 at the time. But here goes the synopsis. The country of Bialya. The death toll is staggering in every direction. Yes, sir. In every direction, (laughs) the corpses of millions of innocent men, women, and children litter the ground. A tapestry of blood, pain, and destruction knit by the bottomless rage of one man, Black Adam. With the murders of his innocent wife, Isis, and her brother, Osiris, the Black Marvel family has been destroyed. 
Having disposed of their killers, Black Adam turns an eye toward China to find the people who are truly responsible for the death of his loved ones. It's always China. The only the entire world stands in his way. Now, this four-issue series focuses on the latter events of DC's 52 uh, that was published weekly between May 2006 to May of 2007 as Black Adam faces off with a multitude of DC heroes. But our main focus is on Martian Manhunter, one of the few remaining members of the Justice League, as Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman are MIA. And Aquaman is actually taken out during the events in this series. In the first issue, Martian Manhunter attempts to stop Black Adam by entering his mind. However, it backfires, sending him to space to recover, contemplating his connection to the human race as he feels their deceitful ways are not his own. Yet... He has deceived many with his own secret identity. Taking some time to watch events unfold across the planet, Manhunter finally reconciles that he intends to change and joins the rest of the heroes in their final stand against Black Adam. So there you go. That is, in a very big nutshell, the four issues of World War III. What I like about this story that's executed poorly is what if you had a guy with basically Superman's power set without Superman's morals, and then you kill his family. What right. would he do? How would right. he react? I love the idea of an immortal god you know, or godling just tearing through people because the pain and trauma of having lost his family was so much that he went on a rampage. There is a animated movie with Thor and the Hulk where Loki separates the Hulk from Banner and then sends the Hulk at Asgard. They refer to it as a Ragnarok uh, event. Wow. Because the Hulk is without that. He's just all Hulk. He's all rage. He doesn't have Banner's calming intellectual influence to have him stop what he's doing. You know, or curb it in any way. He's just he's just a tank. He's a destroyer. Black Adam is not the Hulk. But imagine if you were imagine tomorrow you were, you know, you were to wake up and you're, you know, it's like a punisher situation, your whole family. I mean, but even OK, even better street level starcher. Yeah. What if you're the Punisher with Superman's power set? Right. Right. And that's that's what I like about the potential of this story is what do you do when someone has lost all sense of rational thought? And is just out for blood um, the way any any one of us would be if we had felt like we had been wronged by God and right. our family was unjustly taken from us. My right. problem with the story and the execution is you don't get enough of that. And maybe it's because maybe we didn't read the right book. Maybe what we should have read is that part of that part of the story in 52, yeah. because I was under the impression that that's what this was when I when I picked it up World War Three and suggested it. I wanted to see more of Black Adam and his mindset, I wanted to see, and I'm not a gore hound or anything, but I kind of wanted to see Black Adam tear ass. Yeah. And he kind of does, but so much more of the book is spent on Martian Manhunter waxing philosophically. Oh, yeah. Can I yeah. tell you, I read this this morning, and I had to, like, skip read a lot of it, because I'm like, if I have to hear <laughs> Martian Manhunter drone on any more in this book, I'm thrown it into the backyard. Right, dude. I mean, how can you how, how can you title your book World War Three and have it be this? It was not worthy of that title whatsoever. That sh- it should be on a whole other level. The yeah, we're spending all this time with Martian Manhunter trying to figure out if we are the right people uh, or if we are the people that he should defend. Like it, it, it really was a letdown. I was really gripped with what was going on in 52 because I sat down and I one I, I don't know it was one summer I'd got it from the library shortly after it had come out and I was reading the trades and I really enjoyed what I was getting now you didn't get just straight up always Black Adam and all this other stuff we had the whole lead up with what was going on with Wonder Woman Animal Man was out but I, I never got a sense but... of what was going on with any of these people I didn't understand what was going on like Supergirl just kind of like sh- like falls out of the sky I have no idea <laughs> <I know>. why <laughs> <laughs> Blue, yeah. Booster Gold shows up and he's like, wrong time. And you're like, uh, what the hell is going on, Booster? What are you trying to do here? And he's gone. He does that like two issues. You know what um, this felt like? You know, like in the big crossovers, like Secret Wars or Acts of Vengeance or Civil War or something. And then you're like, 
And for more about what happened when Spider-Man went down that dark alley, check out Amazing yep. Spider-Man 370. This exactly. feels like that. This, like, it's weird that it's a limited series, but it feels like a side story. Right, dude. Yeah, it, that's all this was, was somebody that was trying to write something that fit in. As a matter of fact, I'll read this review right now. And I've got a couple of things that I kind of want to bring up about the book itself, but I do want to read this because this kind of supports exactly what you're saying. Toot Kitty wrote this on uh, one of the websites that I was on. Uh, it says, if you're here following the 52 reading list, I'd suggest perhaps skipping this. It is number one, a reboot for Martian Manhunter, which, okay, yes, I can kind of get that because he is reconciling some stuff that he is, you know, kind of stuff that's happening in his life. This is his story far more than it is a tie into 52. That it's a poorly written reboot doesn't help at all. And then number two, he says unnecessary for 52, which really it is, um, in my opinion, reads like what it is. A hired writer asked to write a story set during 52 that does not impose on 52. That is clearly the vibe that I get. Somebody saying, hey, we ought to write another story to tie in with this event, but don't have it affect anything in the event. Just make sure it's showing what's affecting people outside of the event. My God, this is like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, right, yeah, dude. Right, right. make this show. It exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Don't have it affect the Marvel Cinematic Universe in any way, shape, or form. Right. Uh, he says, if you do read it anyway, it reads a lot better if you simply skip all the internal monologuing from Martian Manhunter, which Mark did. Right here. I did. <laughs> I'm raising, currently raising my hand on this audio format. Right. Uh, doesn't add anything. All he does is literally describe what's happening with purple prose or wax philosophical about dumb garbage every comic book superhero has whacked philosophical about under some hacks pin. He got a little mean there at the end. But yeah, I mean... The first thing I thought of was like Dr. Manhattan, like Dr. Manhattan fucks off and he's like, hmm, you know, it, it, what's going on in my life? Uh, you know, he's trying to figure himself out. Well, that's kind of what Martian Manhunter did. He was like, I'm out. I'm going to go. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go. I, first off, he got his ass kicked. And then he then he like sat on the moon, like resting his ass. And then finally was coming to a decision like, oh, OK, well, yeah, maybe I should help out the fight. You got your ass kicked, man. It's OK. Go back down and join the fight and help the rest of them take it out. And that's where we finally end up at. I was entertained by some of the events that were happening in here, mm -hmm. mainly the brutal maimings and deaths. Oh, yeah. Like he kills <laughs> Tara. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kills Tara. There is a, a there is a character I did not know exist called Young Frankenstein, which I think mm -hmm. is hilarious. But. Yeah, he rips young Honestly, Frankenstein's... I thought it was the grunge. <laughs> right. He rips that guy's arms off and he dies. Yeah. Which is, you know, Martian Manor goes down and, and, like, gets inside his mind as young Frankenstein dies. And then I think one of the first, like, real, like, brutal things that happen is there's this guy named Father Time, which I have no idea who this guy is. Sorry. Right. Uh, they just call me DC Light, whatever you want to do. I, I know the big players, but some dude named Father Time shows up and gets his fucking face ripped off. <laughs> And he's like laying in bed and he's like, oh, shit, he's still alive. And he's got like, you know, he's bandaged all up. He actually Black Adam ripped his fucking face off. Mm -hmm. So I'm OK. I, you know, I'm liking some of that. I like some of the action and some of the gore that's happening in this thing. Uh, but boy, do we get a ton of people showing up here and a ton of side story uh, that's happening in a side story like the Suicide Squad's getting put back together. Supergirl has apparently come back from the future which I didn't know this. I, I didn't realize this. Maybe this is happening in 52 as well, because I was doing some research, and there was something about how she showed up, and there's two of her, but I don't yeah. even recall that happening in the book. I, I, I might have missed it. Which is um, hilarious, because then you also have Power Girl, which is Supergirl from another universe. <laughs> right. Because what the world needs is at least 67 different Supergirls. Uh, uh, Booster shows up for a brief moment just to kind of keep you tied to his arc, where he's just kind of flying around. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, my goodness. He shows up like a couple times. The other note I had here is uh, Martian Manhunter trying to understand the ways of humanity, how deceitful they are. But this is coming from a guy who turns invisible and listens to his friends talk about him. So, uh, you know, yeah, buddy, I guess I, I don't know if he, that's something that he's decided he's going to rectify in his own life. But uh, anyway, um, and my final note is I love how like at the end when finally all the heroes are waiting to rush him, but they don't want to cross the Great Wall of China because 
China's like, we got this handled. We got this handled. And then they're like, just kidding. We, we don't have this handled. <laughs> you guys need to get your ass over here. And all of them finally go over and start fighting uh, Black Adam. You're right. We probably should have read 52 to it'll probably give us more heft when we're looking at Black Adam, the centerpiece for Black Adam. I don't know of many other stories with Black Adam in them. Again, this is a Martian Manhunter joint. This is not a Black Adam joint. This is just like Martian Manhunter getting his ass kicked by Black Adam and pouting and then finally standing up and taking his medicine and and going and kicking some ass. So can I tell you how I don't have a lot to say, but I don't want to stop recording? (laughs) Well, I don't know what else to really say here. There is. I know. Really- Look, I, I've noticed like your your source materials have like been running about 30 minutes. And that's after edit because sometimes it's just not a lot to talk about. That's what kills me about this is that this had so much potential. Like, and I, I don't know. I I guess if you're writing this and like you're given this assignment, and you're like, you can't do anything in impacts. So it's like, OK, I want to have him kill people. Who can we afford to kill? <laughs> like what? What scrubs can we have him just tear through? It's like, oh, who doesn't want to kill Terra? I think, yeah, I was going to say Terra is probably like the big. I didn't even know Young Frankenstein existed. Yeah, Father so Time kind of thinking, was a, uh, was not a blip on my radar. He should have been with a cool name like that. But you know, everyone hates like Man of Steel for the fight between Zod and Superman. But that's kind of what I wanted to see here. I wanted to see like. The heroes just trying to, like, take Black Adam down and Black Adam going, like, fucking Hulk on everyone and just throwing buildings at people, you know? Like, there, I'm, I'm just watching. I'm, I'm flipping through the book, right? We start with Black Adam, and he's confronted by Martian Manhunter, and you have a kind of a struggling of powers between the two of them. And eventually, Black Adam gets the best of Martian Manhunter, and he, like, fucks off into space. And then you have Black Adam, like, tearing through some aircraft carriers and some jets and whatnot. I'm like, that's cool. More of this. Yes, yes. Keep going. I think, like, there's a thing where he, like, throws an aircraft carrier or some shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was interesting because uh, Firestorm. Fuck Firestorm. I forgot about putting that in my fucking notes. <laughs> fuck Firestorm. Like, fuck Firestorm. Firestorm <laughs> saves the day by turning the... Uh, Actually, I, I don't know what's going with, on with Firestorm at that point in time, but he has yeah, to be. He, he I, I honestly thought that, like, he was forming Firestorm with, like, I thought the chick with, like, the blue hair was fucking uh, not, <laughs> Killer Frost or some shit. Right, right. I didn't know what the <laughs> hell was going on. He ends up kissing her, and they become Firestorm, and then they, yeah, they turn the aircraft carrier to snow. Um, but, right. yeah, continue. I'm sorry. Right. So I think that's Father Time, right, with the guys, with the, with the Alpha Flight guys? I um. <laughs> <laughs> alpha flight. Hey, Wrong. Hi, Chris Bailey. <laughs> All right. At least we got an Alpha Flight reference in here. Yeah. So yeah, he tears apart the guys from he's like ripping their faces off. Like that's cool. You know, he throws part of the ship. That's cool. Then we cut away to Nightwing. Why? Yeah. First of all, Nightwing not gonna win a fight with Black Adam. No. <laughs> why why is he in this book? What's he doing? Then we yeah, then we go, okay, so Firestorm, he might win a fight with Black Adam. We're back to him again. And then there's this whole and then like the book goes into this whole subplot over like Firestorm arguing with himself and his two sides and all of that. And it's like, great, I get it. That's a, that's a Firestorm thing. This isn't a Firestorm book, though. Right. Just, like, I hate to be that guy, but just make Firestorm fight Black Adam. <laughs> Let's the, not do the hundred billionth iteration of him arguing with himself. So sportskedia.com uh, <laughs> comes in with the 10 black, uh, 10 best Black Adam stories. Okay. All so right. I, and so we're done tearing apart this book and we're going to look for better books we should have read. <laughs> yeah, I think we ought to. I think we ought to just be like, OK, that one maybe would have been decent. This last page of issue one of Martian Manhunter in the fetal position. I feel like that's every Martian Manhunter story. <laughs> like the quintessential Martian Manhunter pose is him in the fetal position fucking crying. Come at me, uh, DC boys. Come at I, me. I remember Martian Manhunter. I, I didn't you know, I don't. Martian, it was uh, Justice League versus Predator, I think is what oh it was. Oh, my God. You hated yeah. that book. Yeah. That is like legendary Star Trek hate. There is a point in that book where one of the Predators chops Martian Manhunter's head off, clean off his fucking body. His fucking body? Like clean fucking bias him? Where you at, Brooklyn? <laughs> so I'm like, holy shit, he's dead. Man, we are not pulling punches. Right. But then I realized that, you know, he could like, the next panel, you see Martian Manhunter standing up and his face is in his stomach. I didn't know that that is something Martian Manhunter could do. But OK, anyway, so I he, feel like Martian Manhunter's power set is very ill defined. Uh, quite. It, his, his power set is kind of like kid, like boys playing at the park. I have a I have a force field. 
okay, well, I have a ray gun that kills your force field. Okay, but I have, you know, you know it's like, okay, well, I have nunchucks that kill your ray gun. Right. Exactly. It goes back and forth. Exactly. So, Sportskedia, World World War Three comes in at number eight. I don't know if they're listing these from top to bottom or not, but that does say, following Adam's storyline at 52, Keith Champagne tied up loose ends in this four-issue miniseries. Oh, God, what a way. Can we not do this podcast now? Can we just go <laughs> back in time and just read those issues? I'm just... <laughs> I feel like I need to apologize to the vast array of source material listeners. I picked a bad book. Uh, it happens, man. You well, here's the thing. You own the book. We probably we we both we, we both said let's do this. Yep. So it's that's the way it is. Here's number six is 52. It says right off the heels of Infinite Crisis, DC released a weekly series for the span of a year <laughs> that showed DCU and its aftermath. Fans got to see what the DCU was like for a year without the Trinity, written by leading comic book writers in the industry like Grant Morrison, Paul Rucka, Mark Wade, Jeff Johns, and more. So that is some pretty hefty writing right there. Have you, ever, pretty... have you ever read Infinite Crisis? Yeah, and did it for the show or just read it? Just read it. I think I have, actually. Did this you is... get a nosebleed to an aneurysm? <laughs> I can handle those things a little bit better sometimes than you, Mark. Uh, <laughs> But this infinite crisis, if I remember right. Yeah, he, yeah, Superboy punches reality. So I know when I read this. Ask me how I know. How do you know? I read it in 2017, the fall of 2017, September of 2017, as a matter of fact. Ask me why I know that. Why do you know that? Because I read it while sequestered in the fucking jail during a hurricane. And I had a stack of comic books that I was reading to kill time. So sitting in the lobby uh, boy. where the cell reception's better. Man, oh man. And I was watching the rain. Wondering when I, when I was going to get sent home, and I was keeping to myself, trying to get some space from everyone. And I was like, let me read a nice little comic book to keep my mind off of things. And I stupidly read <laughs> Infinite Crisis. <laughs> yeah, I, doesn't anyone rob a bank anymore? Nope, not in this one. No, there's... I, man. I think I might have thrown the book and picked up a felony for Battery <laughs> on Leo when <laughs> Superboy punched reality yeah yeah i started reading convergence a few days back as that's another nosebleed captain carrots in that fucking thing captain <laughs> carrots oh somebody call <laughs> some language evan bevins <laughs> captain fucking carrot so okay what's what's coming in the top three here let's look at this list again so top three a uh number three JSA Savage Times, written by Jeff Johns and David S. Goyer. Sa Savage Times follows Shazam, Hot Girl, and Mr. Terrific as they travel back in time to confront the immortal Vandal Savage and Teth Adam, which I think is... Uh, this story shows how daunting of a villain Black Adam can be, while simultaneously showcasing his skills triumph over Shazam's with the same power set. All right. And then JSA Black Vengeance. Black Vengeance is an iconic Justice Society of America story, which that probably would have tied in pretty well with the movie because you see a lot of Justice Society members mm -hmm. in the trailer, which do you recognize any of these big dudes that are happening in this trailer? Uh, like Dr. Fate and... Oh, yeah, um, I, I know okay. Dr. Fate. That's an easy one. I know Dr. Fate. Adam um, Smasher. Oh, was that who that was? I thought it was just the Adam. Adam, the... No, this the, is... The, the, the big guy that's running that looks like Ant-Man. That's the Adam, isn't it? That's Adam Smasher. That's Adam Sm Fucking hell, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just well, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> and I can't remember who else was in that trailer that I ever... Uh, was there an Alan Scott Green Lantern in that piece? There wasn't, was there? There is definitely Hawkman. Okay. All right. Well, JSA. Uh, so Black Vengeance is an iconic JSA story that takes place between JSA Volume 1, 68 through 75. The Spectre is not tethered to a mortal host and rampages through... Sharuda Kondok's capital city. The Spectre ends up draining Teth Adam of his powers. Adam then receives help from Adam Smasher to regain his powers and subdue the Spectre. Spectre's not one to fuck with. Usually, mm -hmm. he's, he's a big dude. You don't want to mess with that cosmic level of shit. All right, and then you have Black Adam the Dark Age. The Dark Age shows the kind of love Teth Adam has for his one true love, Adriana Tomaz, Isis. Written by Peter Tomasi and illustrated by Doug Mankey, this Black Adam comic follows the events of World War III. Adam travels across Europe, overwhelmed with grief, to resurrect his love, Isis. Okay. Meanwhile, the heroes of the world try to apprehend this godlike being. They want him to answer for his crimes in World War III, but Adam wants to revive Isis. He does so by bringing her corpse to the Lazarus Pit. 
the six issue mini series cemented the character as a long term villain in the DCU. Well, there you go. That's three other stories that we might have had a better time with. <laughs> Black Adam. I mean, coming out of this, if you were just to give this to somebody, Tell me what you think. If you had no idea who Black Adam was, what they would come away with uh, if you gave him World War Three, and that was it. I I don't think they would get a really good impression of who this character is. See, here's here's part of the problem. There's no flashback to the family dot. So you have no you have no idea why he's on this rampage. Basically, right. That's a pro- That's a big problem I have. Right. You they have throw no you idea. right into this story. They, th- they right. you were like thrown it. Why is he so pissed? Right. Yeah. They they absolutely like needed to show you why he went on this rampage. So, like, again, like, have him, like, as he's, like, Karen ass, like, think, but like, have a flashback to his family getting killed, you know? And so much of this should have been him ruminating on what happened to his family. You don't, you know, he, a lot of this is him kind of reacting to who, who's tr- people trying to take him down, and that's it. Like, there should have been a lot of, this is for my family. You don't understand. You will not take them from like that kind of a thing. Right. You just again, it might as well have been the Hulk from the the from the cartoon that I was talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's just he's just fucking viol- It's like violence for violence sake. You know, very 90s. This is a very 90s comic. I'm all right with that. I, I mean, as this is happening in the 2000s, it is a lot of violence, but. Yeah, I, I can agree with you. This definitely feels more '90s than it does. Like it's, I don't even, I don't even know if it's adding anything. If if Martian Manhunter needed a reboot, you, just like the guy said, put it in something else. You know, call it something else. Uh, I would have loved to have this uh, if this would have been more along the lines of Martian Manhunter's solo story, and not even like he gets his butt kicked. We wouldn't be he, talking about it. Yeah, you're right. You know exactly. There's not too many John Johns movies out there. John Jones. John Jones. That's what I meant. Yeah. I, like I, he was. A, I think he was like a great supporting character in the Supergirl show. Right. Like he. I think he works great as like an ancillary character in like Justice League stuff. When he's the focal point, it is like fucking pain drying, man. Yeah. I'm not into it. I, I don't know if there's any, like, okay, let's see what the best Martian Manhunter story is. Greatest Martian Manhunter stories ever told from CBR.com. World War Three is surprisingly absent from this list, by the way, of the greatest <laughs> Martian Manhunter stories ever told. Martian Manhunter, uh, number 33 through 36, a uh, story called In My Life, and the final storyline in his ongoing series, John Ostrander and a few different artists tell the story of John's life, culminating with a face-off against a major villain from the pages of Chase. Martian Manhunter number 20 through 24, Revelations. This one was tricky in Revelations. Ostrander plays up how John has been around so long that he was here for the start of all the major DC heroes. He knows a young Clark Kent. He knew Abin Sir, etc. Yes. Wow. It is a nice look at the history of the DC universe and a further explanation about how John has a good case to be the heart of the DCU. Okay. And then number one is justice league America 38 through 40 justice league versus Despero. Despero returns to regain, to gain revenge on the justice league. Only the justice league that he last faced is pretty much gone with John being the only member still a part of the League. Therefore, John gets the brunt of Despero's rage, a rage so powerful that John must make a tragic sacrifice to protect his teammates and the people of New York City from the powerful villain. Giffen and DeMatteis wrote it, and Adam Hughes and Joe Rubenstein drew it. Okay, well, I, I, and again, I know none of those stories. There's DC The New Frontier, which I've seen before. Uh, a lot of good stuff I've heard talked about The New Frontier. But there's Martian Manhunter 1 million. Oh, interesting. Okay. I remember the 1 million books. There's Final Crisis. My final thought is sort of a general frustration with comics of you are led to believe something is one thing and it turns out it's not. And it's sort of a general statement. I don't know if you agree with this or not. And I kind of wish Chris Bailey were here to tell me what's what. But I feel like unless you're just like a religiously dedicated person to comics... This is what drove people from the industry. Just like you pick up something, it's, you know, it's it's uh, kind of advertised to be one thing, you know, shown to be one thing. And you read it and it's not that at all. And it's like, you know, how many times can you burn me before I stop touching? 
And so I look at this and I'm like, I could have sworn this was going to be a good Black Adam book. Like, I'm not looking for a fucking, you know, war and peace here. I just, I want, I picked up a book. Like, he's right on the goddamn cover. <laughs> like, he's right there. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> right. <laughs> is Martian and, Manhunter, tell me Martian Manhunter is at least on the front, right? They didn't leave him off. Of here. Oh my gosh, the, he's uh, not. He's not. Isn't that the bullshit, though? Oh, by the Dude, way, that was that was steals on here. Do you see that? That wasn't Nightwing, by the way. Uh, that was Jason Todd dressed up as Nightwing. That's okay. why on the front cover. Of, yeah, that's why he's like getting ready to kill some people. You're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, that uh, was odd. Yeah, it, it's Jason Todd. Um, but yeah, I, I do not see Martian Manhunter anywhere on here. What Meanwhile, yeah, see, that's the bullshit. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. So my final thought is write a book that reflects what you're advertising don't advertise something and then write a book that has nothing to do with it uh looks like manhunter does show up on uh on the cover for book three and book four that's uh, well i'm, I'm looking at the cover of the trade also okay i do agree with you because i picked this four issue series up at the comic book store because it said world war three whoa look at this event and yeah you know you got a, a world war three I feel like we got I, took. I feel like we got took, Jesse. I know, man. I and I'm I'm sure that they discounted the price just a little bit there at the comic store. And I was like, I will pick this up because I'm sure any DC event, I'm I'm down for some events. But yeah, I should have did my research because at the top it does say from the pages of 52, World War Three. I just, <clears throat> I am. I I was let down as well. This should be titled something completely different. We gave it a shot, Mark. We read World. War three. And I think that if there's any good thing that came out of this, it's the fact that somebody else out there doesn't need to read it now. We did it for them. And if they're listening to this podcast, you are welcome. Yes, we've done a social service. We did. We did. Let's talk about what's coming up on the schedule, Mark. So this is Ugh. when did we say this was happening? Today, this aired on the 17th. Okay. Tonight, in theory, I will be recording a long road to ruin the halloween of michael my of michael trilogy and halloween h2o and that was for ronnie adams who requested that last year tomorrow we'll be doing a dmu hollywood for halloween ends and then on thursday i'm going to see guar and then uh, i'm sorry wednesday i'm going to see guar and thursday i'm going to see andrew dice clay and then black adam comes out on friday but i'll be at me first in the gimme gimmies should I tell you about more of, oh, hey, you know what I am doing Thursday, though? Uh, re reviewing season two of Only Murders in the Building. Hey, that's like podcast related. Oh, we've nice. got We've got a re-airing of The Long Road to Ruin for Hannibal, part one and part two. And then the Everyone Loves a Bad Guy for Hannibal Lecter. I think the most popular one he's ever done, as a matter of fact, on the 24th of October. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, for myself, you can go into the archive, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last week, speaking of events... We talked a big event uh, on the Unspoken Issues podcast. Four podcasts, 18 chapters, Valiance Unity. Mark Radulich doesn't know who a Solar Man of the Atom is. He doesn't know who a Rye is or Shadow Man. No, but I tell you that I love corned beef on a Rye. All right, all right, all right. You could probably cook a little corned beef on this Rye at, at the end of this uh Hey, you have to tune in and figure out what the hell that teaser's about right there. Yeah, hey, look, it was me, Dean, Derry. We got together. We talked all 18 chapters of Unity across three podcasts. And one podcast is just a solo podcast getting you ready for it. And if you like Valiant's, if you don't even know anything about Valiant Comics, go check it out. Because Dean will swear that it's one of the best events that came out of 19, uh, out of the 1990s. Out of all of the at, at Death of Superman you know, Batman getting his back broke. Dean will stand by Valiance Unity as being one of the better told events, especially 18 chapters. You wonder how in the world can they keep that together? They do a fantastic job. I was there. I read it all. Listen, a lot of production went into that too. Get to hear some synopsis with a little music in the background. I don't do that just for every event, you know. And then previous to that, should be able to hear myself and Chris Armstrong on the previous Source Material Comics podcast where we discussed Spider-Man Blue. It was weird because it's a, it's a romance comic, Mark Radlinch, with a little bit of fighting mixed in. Yeah, it's just a bit of a different 
lean for the Source Material Comics pod- podcast, especially me and Chris, who talk 90s comics all the time. We jumped into the early 2000s, and here it is, Spider-Man talking about Peter Parker and his romance with uh, Gwen Stacy. It was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and Mary Jane shows up, and oh, boy. But anyway, go check that out. So I think that's all that I have. So with that being said... That's Mark Radlich. I'm Jesse Starcher. We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. All of this would not be possible without W2Mnet.com, so make sure to seek them out for more podcasts. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please feel free to share, and we look forward to entertaining you again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The you should source. put that entire conversation that you just recorded in the gag reel, just <laughs> word for word. Oh, I'm sorry, were you trying to intro this? Yeah. You're going to make me behave, Daddy? Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, would you like to do your podcast now? Uh, just let me do the intro. You can talk the rest of the podcast. <laughs> well, we, we had a quite a few things to kind of pick from. Did we? No, we didn't really. I, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> So Keith Champagne, just like you said, John. Oh, Austin. the champagne. Champagne. Somebody get five finger death punch on the phone right now. I uh, death- I often get a bayala when I go to the bagel shop. <laughs> <laughs> get you a carton of milk with that. It'll help it sit down. I like to dip, I like to dip my bayala in my coffee. <laughs> Have I'll you looked at the vast sundry of porn that features Power Girl? Aquaman resurfacing something. Not in a lot of porn. I'm sorry. No, do not send me any links. It's Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, right? They're the ones that like partner together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Blue and Gold. You think there's gay porn of that? Do not send me the links. (laughs) Shiratra. Nope. Shiruta. That's what you you put on your tacos. (laughs) Kandox. Can't. Kandok. Con. Kandahar? No. (laughs) Con. Kandok. Oh my God. Fucking time travel. That's kicks you in the ass every time. To perfect. To pre- <laughs> Enough of this madness.